I'm Yanan Wang and I've been covering the School of Architecture for the past year. Today we have with us Robert A.M. Stern, the Dean of the Architecture School and the founder of New York-based firm Robert A.M. Stern Architects, also known as RAMSA. Over the course of his 47-year career, Dean Stern has been called America's preeminent traditionalist architect, the Sway <coughs> Loford Sultan of suburban retrotecture, and the Ralph Lauren of architecture. He has designed such monuments as the Disney Feature Animation Build, 15 Central Park West, and recently the George W. Bush Presidential Library. Around the School of Architecture, Dean Stern is known for his quick wit and equally sharp style. A student once told me that he wouldn't dare to be seen by Dean Stern without a business suit on. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dean Stern. Thank you, Nan. Nice to see you. Um, so, you teach a lot of aspiring architects. Can you? talk to our viewers about when you decided that you really wanted to be an architect. I don't know, somewhere by the time I was 12 or 13 or 14 years of age, I thought that might be what I wanted to do. I thought that would be what I wanted to do. And um, I didn't grow up in an atmosphere where architecture was uh, an everyday word, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but all around the city of New York where I did grow up, particularly in Manhattan, there was an awful lot of exciting stuff happening just after the Second World War was behind us, um, and the United Nations was being built in Weaver House, and uh, I took notice of those buildings, and I thought, that's something really interesting. So what are some tips or pieces of advice that you would give to people striving to be architects? Um, what are some of the most important things that they need to know about the industry? Well, uh, first of all, students if I'm addressing, say, Yale undergraduates or undergraduates, whoever, mm -hmm. wherever they might see it, <clears throat> the first and most important thing is to get as good an education as you can and not to be a specialist, a narrow specialist. I myself majored in American history, which I think was a very interesting background, and I took lots of courses in English and uh, art history and um, sociology and other things as an undergraduate. So I think that's very important. I also think before going to architecture school, it's very good for people uh, coming out of a college like Yale to maybe take a year or two and work in a professional office, get a feeling for the profession as it really is practiced, so that the um, cobwebs of mist are, uh, are, are, are taken away from their eyes and they have the reality. People should be realistic about the profession of architecture. It can be glamorous. You do wonderful buildings and wonderful places, meet wonderful people. It's not the most rewarding profession. It's not an easy trick, a ticket to riches. Mm -hmm. um, for all the architects who you know by name, by reputation, there are hundreds and hundreds more who are contributing to that work mm -hmm. and who do fabulous uh, work and satisfying work, but aren't, don't have their names on the door. So you have to be recognized that in advance. But I, if you want to do it, you should do it. I think it's interesting the word profession. Mm -hmm. um, architecture is a profession, and when you profess something, it's got a slightly misty or mm -hmm. religious quality to it. You really it, it, you have to take it on as something to make a commitment to. Talking about your own career, um, I listed some some buildings that you're well known for having designed, but what are some of your own personal favorite projects? No favorites. <laughs> you shouldn't have favorites when you're an architect. It's like being a parent. You shouldn't have favorite children. <laughs> and if you have them, keep it to yourself. And we have quite a lot of work in Asia, especially in China. New community, uh, like a urban village at the edge of one of the major cities, and some projects right in the center, where we're trying to bring a sense of urbanism that once existed in China, mm. kind of urbanism, and still prevails in the United States and in Europe, but which has been legislated out because of the Soviet influence, because of the very bureaucratic uh, planning process in China. It's hard to achieve, so we struggle very hard to put back streets, to create intimate places, and meet the density requirements of these new towns, which are part of the federal, the government's policy of bringing people from the country into the cities. So I mentioned that you've been called the Ralph Lauren of architecture. 
Who would be the Robert A.M. Stern of fashion? I'd have to say Ralph Moore. <laughs> Funnily enough, I've only met Ralph Lauren once. Oh, okay. When he very generously um, uh, gave an endowed a visiting professorship here in the school in honor of Charles Gwathney, oh, wow. who was his great friend. So, so it was a compliment to you when you heard that? I'm not sure it was given to me as a compliment, <laughs> but I took it as a compliment. All right. So this was Yanan Wang reporting for YTV. Back to you.